Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast, the podcast for all things Even Stevens. I'm Brittany Butler. I'm Ethan Brim. And today we are talking about season one, episode 14, Battle of the Bands. Great episode. One of my favorites. This is going to be a fun one. So, of course, before we get into it, I am so excited because uh, for the first time ever on this podcast, we finally have a voice message to listen to. Can we get an air horn? I will edit in an air horn, yes. Please. This is so exciting because if you have listened to the podcast, you know that we have our little segments and we have some sound bites for certain segments and I love sound bites. I love sound bites. I love them and I love editing them and I love using them whenever we possibly can. So I did my thing and I edited a nice little soundbite for this segment now and I'm so excited to debut it. So for the first time on the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast, it's time to check our voicemail. You have reached the voicemail box of the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast. At the tone, please record your voice message. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Dario. I've been listening to your podcast heavily lately, especially how Disney Plus just came out with the whole streaming service. I've been watching Even Stevens like crazy. So uh, I've been watching the episodes and also listening to your podcast simultaneously. So it's just like really bringing me back. And uh, I grew up on Even Stevens. I watched it when it premiered on Disney Channel. And growing up, it was my favorite show of all time. And uh, Shia was just an incredible, incredible talent that I got introduced to. And I started acting like him. I started trying to talk like him. The way he'd ad-lib things, the way he'd react to certain lines, to certain situations, normal 12-year-old kids, they wouldn't really react the way Shia would. Shia went from a child star to, like, this incredibly serious actor, but he's able to pull it off. You can't really say that about other child actors. So I just really wanted to point that out. I just really have I have a tremendous respect for Shia. But, yeah, man, I just wanted to give you guys a shout-out. I just wanted to say that you guys are doing an amazing job just talking about the episodes. Your guys' chemistry is is amazing as well. But yeah, man, keep doing your thing. Thank you for everything. And uh, keep coming with episodes. All right, guys. Bye. Thank you. That was amazing. And that was our very first voicemail. Thank you so much, Dariel. I think that's how he pronounced his name. That's a great first voicemail, too, because he's very passionate. Yes. And he and I would probably be best friends because... I know, so many similarities, right? Uh, Yeah, we got to connect. Hit me up on Instagram, man. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's a really good voicemail. Made some good points, actually. Mm-hmm. Child stars on TV or like Disney Channel are comedy actors. And to yes. transition into a serious role, I mean, you have a couple of people who still have careers, like obviously like yeah. Hillary Duff or um, mm-hmm. Raven. But I don't think any of them have gone as serious as Shia Not has, to the point right? where it's like, he could be nominated for an Oscar mm-hmm. this year, maybe. Uh, or I mean, even him winning an Emmy yeah. for playing Louis Stevens, like no other Disney actors exactly. won exactly. Emmys for their Disney roles, you know. But just the fact that he's such a good, serious actor, too, not just mm-hmm. comedy. And it's funny because comedy is what made us fall in love with him. Yes. But everything else he's done after that, his fans have stayed the same, and he's done mostly serious stuff. Mm-hmm. Shy is amazing, obviously, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah, great voicemail. So anyone else listening now, hopefully you hear how fun that is and how nice it is to actually hear you guys' voices instead of me just reading your words for you, like, you know, all the letters. Like, you can call in and say this stuff yourself. It's just really, really cool. So hopefully this gives you guys a cool um, example of how it'll sound. Mm -hmm. It's just super fun. Yeah. Yes. So thank you again for that voicemail. And it was also so nice. You commented on our chemistry. Yeah. It's just nice to know, you know, that apparently people are vibing with what we're doing. With that subject in school that I'm feeling. What was that? Ethan Craft line? Remember that? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I like you and all, but there's just no, um, oh shoot. What's that a subject in a high school that I'm never going to pass? Chemistry? Yeah. There's just no chemistry. I I was thinking about that line. (laughs) That's funny. Yep. Anyway. That is funny. Getting back 
to Battle of the Bands here. So it was directed by Savage Steve Holland, who directed, which one did he just direct again? Deep Chocolate. It was Deep Chocolate, Deep Chocolate. Another CGI fest. So it was directed by Savage Steve Holland and written by Mark Warren, who, uh, you know, Mark Warren and Dennis Rinsler, two very big heavy hitters in the world of Even Stevens. They pretty much were the showrunners, basically. They both were the movie, I think. Yeah, and Sean McNamara directed the movie. Yeah. So they're what make Even Stevens, Even Stevens to yeah. a degree, I'd say. So according to both Wikipedia and IMDb, this originally aired November 24th, 2000. And again, this was number 114 in production. So these episodes up until the next one were in production order. This has a 9.1 on TV.com, which is high, but there were episodes higher than this. This would make it number five out of season one and then number 23 in the whole series ranked on TV.com. Okay. Which is a little low in my opinion. Yeah, it is low. Obviously, they're not ranked comparatively. Like, yeah, no one's going through and like ranking them individually. I don't know. <laughs> As, <are>. <laughs> As we did. As we did. But yeah, it's not really telling of how good it is, I don't think. Yeah. But it is interesting, on IMDb, it has an 8.1, which is way above yeah. all the episodes we've done. Like, pretty much we've been static at 7.5 yes. for, like, every episode on IMDb, and now suddenly, zoop, 8.1, so yeah. that's a definite shift in rating there. Yeah. So I have this at number four on my list. Nice. This is top five for me. Yeah. And it deserves it. And you, my friend, have it, I think it's number 10, 10, right? Yep. I guessed six. I couldn't remember because I haven't looked at my list in a while. I was like, I knew I had it high, but I think it suffered from when I watched it in order. Initially, I probably had it like top three. And then, you Mm. know, the more episodes you watch, you kind of move stuff down. I mean, it's hard to move it higher because I love every episode. I might be able to put it at eight maybe or seven if I really move stuff around. But this is just such a good episode. Um, mm. uh, it's the first episode I ever watched of Even Stevens. So right. I definitely owe it to this episode. And I think any episode could have been one that got me into the show. But this one was just so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, second episode in a row, we don't see Steve or Eileen. But everyone else is in this episode, like Tom and Artie and Tawny and Donnie. Mm-hmm. And I think if you look at the episodes in terms of importance, you can make a case that this is like two or three Oh, yeah. Just as far as how significant it is, as far as like the band subplots. Mm-hmm. Memorable. It's just a really good episode. It is. All around. It's hysterical, too. So the Disney Plus synopsis. I also realized that Disney Plus, they have like a really small sentence synopsis, but then they have a bigger synopsis when the episode is over. It'll tell you the synopsis for the next episode in like a really big paragraph, but you can't find the more detailed summary for the episode you're watching. They, they got to work out some kinks. They're pretty open to feedback. Yeah. If you go to their website, there's a section where you can recommend shows. So mm. I recommended Jet Jackson, oh, New yeah. Jersey. Yep. Yeah. So you can suggest stuff if you don't like how the synopsis is or whatever, I think, too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But this one was pretty good. So their synopsis is... Lewis is the manager of Twitty's band until Twitty brings Ren in as his lead singer. Lewis and Ren argue, of course, and Lewis decides to form a band of his own. The two bands duke it out for the right to play at a hot high school party. They argue, of course. That's my favorite part. (laughs) I know, they argue, of course. The IMDb synopsis, just because I like reading those because they're always a little off, uh, (laughs) is popular guy Jason needs a band for his party. Ren and Lewis end up in competition to be the winning group. That's yeah, it. Neither of them are winning either. So. <laughs> oh, man. So general thoughts. I mean, what even is there to say about this, right? Like in my written notes, I just said classic, just classic, iconic, memorable, hilarious, arty. Everyone's amazing. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. When I looked at my top 10, like all of them, to me at least, are very consistent from start to finish. Yeah. Um, this one's uh, is a perfect example of that. We've seen these episodes a, a million times, but but it's I was still making me laugh. I was so funny. Mm. Oh no, yeah. I said um, that this episode will always be solid. I had a smile on my face the whole time. I laughed wholeheartedly. Yeah. There's music humor galore, basically. <laughs> yeah. Just the fact that there's music in it, I count as music humor, especially well, like 
just the song and like the songs they sing it they're just so freaking funny like and it's satire too just like the way tom's like you don't even need to have it, instruments anywhere exactly <laughs> it's so exactly, funny exactly it's so good yeah yeah and i said shia is incredible just fantastic pure even stevens and this is the episode that birthed our intro music stop right is the name of that they call it i think it's called crazy i put it in my review there's a video that's like a slight blooper reel yeah. as well as just clips from the show yep. yeah yeah set to like a full version of the song and like the little credit at the beginning says even steven's crazy it's my favorite tweety steven's connection song it's a good one so good i just love the way ren sings it too yeah i really like this song mm-hmm. i always get stuck in my head <laughs> what's your favorite song from the tweety steven's connection oh another perfect day there's only really four songs would probably be my favorite no they got okay so they got yeah. they got sacramento girl yeah. another perfect day crazy um surf's up. dawn patrol dawn patrol yeah uh or surf's up or whatever and then am i missing one yeah, we are. And then Dream Vacation. As well. Oh, I forgot about Dream Vacation. Yeah, mm-hmm. from from the um, movie. End of the movie. Yeah. So, let's do it. This is going to be a fun one. I am so excited to talk about this episode. This might be the most excited I've been to talk about an episode so far. Probably me too, actually. Aside from Easy Way, here we go. Plot point time. So in my notes, I said it starts with Lewis bringing down the house, literally. So we hear the guitar and just everything of Sacramento Girl just pulsing through the Stevens house. So loud. Everything's shaking. Is this the first time we see Mr. Pookie as well, by the way? I wrote that too. I, wrote, I think so. At least the first time we get a name for him. Yes. So we see Mr. Pookie come falling off of Ren's yeah. desk because everything's shaking so bad. And like, that's it. So like Ren gets up. She's all bothered. She was in the middle of studying. And so then she goes to go downstairs to see what the heck's going on, but she runs into Donnie in the hallway, and she's like, what's going on? And Donnie's like, oh yeah, that's Lewis's band. And then I noticed Ren says, Lou has a band? Yeah, she said Lou. That's like the first and only time she calls him I Lou. I think she calls him that one other time. But yeah, it was enough for me to notice it, though. I can't remember, I'm pretty sure she does it one other time. I can't think of it. Now I'm going to pay attention. But that's a good line, though. Lou has a band? He can barely play the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And so she goes running downstairs. Ren tells them, you know, keep it down. I'm trying to study. Like, what's going on? And uh, Twitty basically introduces us to the Alan Twitty Project. I'd like you to meet the Alan Twitty Project. We've got Mr. Artie Ryan on the bass. And on drums, we've got Andy Blitz. And on lead guitar. That'd be me. I'm Alan Twitty. <coughs> oh yeah, and then uh, our manager, my friend, and your little brother, Louis Deeds. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're the manager? Yes, it's my basement. Andy Blaine on drums, which I'm like, is this Carly Blaine's relative? That's what I wrote too. I was like, I, I was like, it might be a uh... Twitty's cousin. This has to be yeah. Twitty's cousin, maybe. Yeah. He never has any lines, so we don't have to pay him. Never has any lines. <laughs> Doesn't say a single word. I couldn't find anything about the actor. Because <laughs> he probably wasn't even credited, right? Because he didn't yeah. speak. I don't even know if the name <laughs> showed up in the credits. I Maybe on Disney Plus it, it did. Uh, but yeah, there's an episode later on where we find out Twitty has a cousin named Carly Blaine. So yeah. just made the connection. And then, I love that. You're the manager? Yes, it's my basement. Uh, <laughs> just, who's sound mixing the garage sessions for no reason. <laughs> he just doubles as a bunch of things. Yeah. And I was thinking too, just art. I feel like the episodes with Artie, he steps the episodes up in a different way because it allows Lewis to kind of play the straight man to mm. Artie's just. I mean, Artie is a straight man. Yeah. But I mean, in this episode, he, he was not. Yeah. He's just so good. The chemistry is really good. I'm, I wish he was in more episodes. He's a really good character. I love him. This cuts to Lewis saying that, you know, he's doing this to fulfill the dreams of his boys or whatever. Whatever that means. <laughs> so he's the manager of, of this band to fulfill the dreams of his boys. And then he makes one of those classic Lewis faces and daydreams. And we get a daydream of Lewis just by himself. Forget about his boys. There are no boys to be found in this daydream. Uh, and he is just in a giant fur pimp coat, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and glasses, which they took inspiration from in Honey yep. Boy. Yep. 
direct inspiration from this. Uh, sunglasses, and he has a Britney Spears clone and a Jennifer Lopez clone on either side of him, dressed yeah. in J Lo's iconic, controversial green dress. Not as revealing though, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, with like a shirt underneath it because <laughs> Disney. And then Britney Spears, baby, one more time outfit which i said are both very dated things but iconic things oh yeah it, very iconic i mean from then if you talk about late 90s early 2000s i mean maybe two of the most iconic outfits oh, yeah. female outfits at least i mean jlo's dress has its own wikipedia page yeah so and the britney thing is still people are still dressing up like that for halloween oh yeah but that's what i meant like how this show makes really smart pop culture references like even back then Mm -hmm. it's almost like they already had hindsight when they were making these things like they already knew they were like yeah this is a solid (laughs) reference to make because this is going to stay relevant even survivor like is still on yeah later on yeah yeah just really really solid references yeah and so yeah lewis in this daydream i just love it so much where he's like i'd like to thank these two lovely ladies nothing to do with the music (laughs) like what have they done for you besides stand there (laughs) oh my god and then uh there were a couple other people involved but (laughs) and then they both just kiss him on either cheek and he just smiles and that's it that's really good (laughs) it's so good yeah, to fulfill the dreams of the boys who he can't even be bothered to mention. They're just some other people that were involved. The boys. <laughs> the boys. S- especially Andy. Lewis snaps out of the daydream and basically informs the band for the first time that they're actually rehearsing for a gig. He explains... Twitty, get real, dude. This is the music business. I got Donnie to hook me up with his friend Jason Bagwell who's throwing this really big party on Saturday and he needs a band, so I got him to let us try out. And this is kind of him doing the plot out loud. Very, very yeah. long sentence as well. Yeah. But it's great. I mean, he, he needs to explain it. Like, I mean, he's explaining it to them as much as he's explaining it to us. It works, yeah. And then one of the greatest moments in the whole episode. Why would some high school guy want some junior high kids to be performing at his party? Because we rock! And we'll work for nothing. For nothing! Will somebody please hose him down? For nothing! Will somebody please hose him down? <laughs> He's so good. He's so over the top. Again, like we've talked about some directorial things, like Sta- yeah, Savage Steve Holland. Uh, some mm-hmm. of the decisions he makes, he didn't have to cut to Twitty laughing. Yeah. But he cuts to AJ genuinely yeah. breaking. He leaves in a couple of really organic moments, especially mm-hmm. like later on. There's another one. I'll bring it up. But yeah, he's I mean, I think he does a really good job with this episode. And so Lewis tells them, yeah, this is like the music business. You know, we said we're going to nail the audition. And then Twitty says, not without a lead singer. And he goes, ah, oh, no, I already got you covered. And I love the way the flyers just, <laughs> he just pulls up a flyer that he made that says, lead singer needed for hot new band with flames on it. And then yeah. call Lewis. <laughs> 555. Five, five. Which thankfully, this was a number that they did not blur out on Disney Plus, but yeah. they blur out so many phone numbers now on Disney Plus. It's so weird. Even the 555 five, five ones? Yep. So weird. Uh, did you notice one of the flyers, the one on the dog? You know what I'm talking about? Was it a Fantasia? No, but underneath it says, follow me to the sandwich shop. And there's a, there was an Even Stevens sandwich shop in Utah, which now rest in peace is out of business, I think. But uh, yeah. I did not notice that. So yeah, so it's basically, it cuts to a montage of all the, like a really short montage of everywhere Lewis has put these flyers, which is genuinely everywhere, uh, just flooding the world with these posters for a yeah. hot new band but clearly it must not have been good enough because or there's no talent in sacramento other than yodelers all these people that like don't stand a chance go to sacramento that's why everyone sucks <laughs> except the freaky dance kid he was good i like he was good <laughs> he actually was not that bad he was probably the best <laughs> he one would, I, know, I was gonna say he's actually the best well yeah so yeah so then it cuts to the stevens house it's the day of auditions they kind of pan down this line of people who are in line to audition uh did you notice anything about this scene by the way maybe because i think i have a fun fact that no one has no one has discovered ever i had one about the country singer she was a casting director Nope, not that. Is it? You're not going to believe it. Give me a hint. Give me a hint. No, no, no. I got to just say it. It's too good. All right. 
On the Honey Boy podcast, there is a Honey Boy podcast right now. It's just a four episode little mini podcast series uh, with cast and crew. Mm -hmm. So Shia, he's on it, of course, and he was telling a few even Stevens stories, which is pretty kind of fun. I recommend you all check it out. Yeah. But in one episode in particular, he was talking about how his dad was always trying to get on the show. No way. His dad was always going up to Matt Dearborn specifically. He said this guy named Matt. <laughs> this is crazy. I remember him like coming to set all the time and uh, he'd come. He'd be sitting in the lobby, even Stevens, and every time we would do a table read, there'd always be some like one line or two line character that my dad would vie for. And we're on a Disney Channel show. Try so to get on the show. Try to get on the show. No. no. Yeah. My dad was always trying to get on the show. You never told All me that. the time. Always, <laughs> no, always. I would have put that in. Always trying to get on the show. No way. Always, yeah. How? He would go up to the writer and he'd go, you know, uh, I could probably do this, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, 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 and he was like, a, he was a, my dad was a scary guy, you know, like right. cute here, but like. Right. When you have like a six one both. guy, yeah, he's both. both, yeah. He had like this scary kind of persona, <laughs> and he would go up to this to the head writer, this guy named Matt, and he'd always try to proposition Matt for a role all the time. And Matt would like nod at him and then run upstairs and try to exit through different exits. And like he was always trying to hide from my father. Man, I feel robbed right now. Yeah, well, it's, it's, good. Right it's, it's probably for the best. I guess this was one instance where Jeffrey LaBeouf got his wish because he is. The old man no at the end of the audition line. Oh, that's so cool. You need to put that on the IMDb. As an IMDb trivia, yeah. yes. Or in TV or TV.com. That's super cool. He has his beard and his long gray hair and he's dressed like a hippie and he's just standing there yeah. waiting. I know exactly what he looks like too. I mean, I yep. know what the hippie looks like, not thinking that it's the same guy. Yeah. That's insane. I had just listened to that podcast not too long ago. And so the idea that his father had always wanted to be on the show was in my yeah. head. And then I'm just watching the episode, just looking at everybody. And then, you know, yeah. I just have Honey Boy on the brain that I'm suddenly just like, wait a minute. I was like, is that Shia's dad? Yeah, it was Kismet. And I just looked really closely. And then, you know, just to make sure, reached out to Dearborn for confirmation. Okay. Sent him a screenshot. And he was like, that most certainly is his father. Great catch. Wow, that's so cool. What Did Shia say... He got on a couple episodes or just one? Or? No, he just said that he was always trying to get on the show. Wow, so I, I'm going to look for him if I ever see him. Right exactly, now. right? I was going to say, oh my gosh, now anytime we see any like older guy, we got to look closely and make sure it's not Shia's dad. Props to Dearborn, by the way, for, you know, you throwing him a bone there. I know, right? Yeah, that's really cool. Just standing there in line. Because, I mean, especially <laughs> if somebody like unsolicitedly is like, yo... I want to be on, like, put me in the back. You know what I mean? You're going to be like, no. Yeah. Dearborn was like, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, and Dearborn's <laughs> like a probably a pretty goofy guy. So he's like, yeah, I'm just throwing him on there. I mean, it works for the scene. I almost wish that they had him audition now. I know, right? Because And that's how I also knew it must have been him because he's the only one in that line that we do not see audition. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So I said, that's got to be, it's got to be his dad just standing there. And I looked it up to see if anyone else had seen this and no one has seen it. So I was just like, wow. That's insane. Yeah. It's crazy. You know, Lewis is handing out lyric sheets to everybody, which I think is so funny because none of them know this song. He's just like, look over these lyrics and we'll be with you in a minute. I'm like, yeah. they don't know the melody. They don't know the timing. They yeah. don't know anything. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're all bad. Apparently Red knows the, ex the whole song by heart. <laughs> Once we get there, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, she's probably heard it failed enough times yeah. to kind of get the gist. But uh, yeah, I think it was a, a trial and error with the, those first people. They were just winging it. They had no idea how this thing was supposed to go. Yeah. We got to talk about the people in the line. So we got this kid, the first kid. Freak dance kid. Well, no, there was like another kid that's kind of popping and locking. Oh, yeah, you're right. At the, the beginning. Yeah, he's an older kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got him, and then we have the country lady who's spraying perfume into yeah. her mouth, or she's spraying, like, I'm assuming it's, like, probably breath spray, but yeah. it's in, like, a perfume bottle. <laughs> so she weird. just looks like an insane person, which she That's is. Weird. Then we have the freak dancer kid who yeah. is this little kid who's just standing there going, like, yeah. He's the best one, <laughs> Like, yeah. she's practicing. <laughs> and then we have this punk chick who all she does is burp. <laughs> yeah, that's like her thing. <laughs> she was not bad. I mean, I liked her when she was actually trying to sing. 
she wasn't bad for the song. Yeah, for the vibe. I mean, if that's what you were going for. For the vibe, yeah, yeah. But oh my God, she's sitting there resting her foot on top of Mr. Pookie and she's just looking at a family photo of the Stevens and she's just looking at it. <laughs> just like, and then she, just and then she and then she uses it as one of her like vocal ad libs later on when she's auditioning. <laughs> she, she's like, "Yeah, this fits here." Burp. <laughs> <laughs> I know Sacramento girl. <laughs> yeah, like she she actually made like the creative choice, the creative decision to burp right there. It's so bizarre. <laughs> Or she just, like, or she just let it out. She just has a burping yeah. problem. She just can't stop burping. She burps all the time. So yeah, and then the last person in line is Shy's dad, who does not audition. So then Ren sees. Yeah, this is where we first get the name of Mister Pookie because the punk chick is resting her foot on Mister Pookie, and she says, "Can you get your spike combat boots off, Mister Pookie? He's very sensitive." Yeah, and then I love the way Ren tells Lewis, I want my house back. It's like, it's your house. Oh, yeah, calm down. You already got your own phone line. It's like, are you paying the mortgage, Ren? Yeah. Like, I know the parents don't care. They haven't, they're nowhere to be found. <laughs> I know, where it's, are they? Like, Lewis is auditioning. We, we need to leave town. They are letting all of these strangers into their house with their two 13 and 14 year old children. Yeah. So Ren is clutching Mr. Pookie and she turns to head towards the kitchen and she just sees two feet like up on the counter, like from upside down or whatever. And I do love that. Okay, we eat on that counter because there's already a bunch of psychos in the house. So I'm sure these two people are psychos too. (laughs) Pops up. One of them is Donnie. Turns out they were just uh, working out. And then another guy pops up. And it's Jason Bagwell, who Ren is just immediately smitten with, thinks he is so hot. Yeah. And Donnie introduces him. This is my buddy Jason. He's on the gymnastics team with me, because Donnie's on every team known to man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, as soon as this Jason guy goes to shake Ren's hand, she tosses Pookie to the curb. That's sore. Yeah. (laughs) That's flagrant. She tosses Pookie so quick. Jason has these like canine teeth. He's like a vampire. I didn't. What? Yeah, he has these like teeth. He has these like teeth. He has like vampire teeth. Like, you ever noticed it? I mean, I don't mean, mean to make fun of the guy's no, no, teeth. No. They're also really white. And I give props to his white teeth. But Oh, yeah, I do see it. Yeah, he kind of has fangs. Yeah. yeah, he has like fangs, right? It's weird. But his smile is so corny when he's yeah. shaking Red's <laughs> hand. Okay, we're hanging the camera on you for a little bit, so just keep that smile going. Yeah. <laughs> like, you be know. very cool. Like, be super smooth and stuff. <laughs> he's slimy, because we, we find out that he's awful at the end. I, I can't stand Jason Bagwell. Besides June Marie, who I probably like Jason slightly more than June Marie, they're probably, mm-hmm. they should date. Oh, yeah. June Marie and... Jason Bagwell. They're both terrible people. Oh, right. But Jason Bagwell is another one off character. Yep. And Andy Blaine. And Andy Blaine. Yeah. But yeah. So I hate the way he talks, right? She's like, this is my sister, Ren. Ren's a cool name. (laughs) Oh my gosh. This guy's so cringy. (laughs) Goes to shake Ren's hand and she's just smiling at him. And then it cuts to an incredible daydream sequence from Ren with an amazing song as well. Yeah. But the best thing about this daydream is that Ren, they're running to each other on the beach. Christy's hair looks amazing in this scene, by the way. Yeah, like, they did her up super hard. It looks so good. They're running to each other on the beach. Jason does, like, four backflips because he's on the gymnastics team. (laughs) You know, so Ren's just, like, in her daydream, oh, he's on the gymnastics team, so in my daydream, he's going to be doing four backflips towards me because he's an amazingly hot gymnast. And his shirt's open. His shirt's open, blowing in the wind. She's giving him a 10 on the scoreboard. So many dream sequences. Yeah, but that's just just too funny. Uh, Holding up 10. (laughs) It's just the the cherry on top of this. Yeah, the song ends. Because our love is meant to be. And then the first glimpse of Jason being a jerk. You can let go now. You can let go now. (laughs) Oh my god. Sign number one. Sign number one. Ren has terrible judgment with guys, by the way. 
Oh, awful. I had a really hard time picking the best quote, so I'm just going to say a bunch of the ones that stood out to me. So one of my favorite ones is right here when Ren finishes shaking his hand. You can let go now? Oh, um, I'm sorry. You have a really nice steady, um... Pulse there. Um. <laughs> you have a nice pulse. Well, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> oh, my God. And so she starts putting it together. She's like, oh, so you're party guy, Jason, huh? Oh, my gosh. And then the way he talks about his own party, yeah, it's going to be a real blowout. <laughs> <laughs> He's so slimy. Maybe I'll see slimy you there. Gosh, maybe, yeah, if I, yeah, maybe you will. Oh, my gosh. She's so crazy. So Ren's all excited, and we're getting into, like, cringy Ren territory. This is how she gets with guys. Yeah. It's always a little, eh. Yeah. Jason heads out, and she says, ta-ta. And then she's like, what's wrong with me? And Donnie immediately can tell, and he's just like, I, I love Nick Spano here, though, when he goes, no, 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 no. What? Forget it, Ren. I don't want my sister going to a high school party. That's not fair. Lewis gets to go, and he is way younger than me. He's, like, protective. Yes, it was, like, so good big brother like instinct mm-hmm. thing kicking in it was it was great what stood out to me was when she goes uh lewis gets to go and he is way younger than i am one year <laughs> like you are in the eighth grade he is in the seventh grade oh he is way younger yeah. than me it's a little different <laughs> yeah a little different also jason wasn't that the guy mutai wasn't his real name jason oh his real name was jason yeah 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 two guys named jason in ren's history yeah Donnie explains to her, um, Lewis is only allowed to go to the party if his band gets the gig, and that's a big if. <laughs> and then yeah. Ren realizes, all right, the band. She's going to try to audition to sing, but not before we get another amazing montage of the best of the worst American Idol rejects, essentially. <laughs> it's a good montage. I like it. All the people that we saw in the lineup, it's just great. I'm going to have to put in a clip of that because... yeah. How can you not? Yeah, what are some of these people even hearing? That lady, Sacramento girl. <laughs> She's trying to hit the notes. Oh my god, set my fray. <laughs> you should do an impression video of all the people. From this. <laughs> I was gonna say it's funny because like Lewis is usually the one who kind of has this agenda mm-hmm. and operates according to that, but here Ren is kind of taking on that role, which is kind of interesting. Mm. And Lewis get kind of gets screwed over. Because it's always the Lewis always finding a way, but now yeah. it's like Ren trying to find a way yeah. into this. So this awful montage ends. I love the way Lewis tries to act like there really was someone in there. He's like, so <laughs> yeah. should we uh, discuss our choices? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was interesting. In, so during the auditions, he pretends to hang himself. That wouldn't fly now. I was shocked. Not on the Disney Channel. I noticed that when I did my review and I gift it and I was like, look at this. I'm like, he is oh, hanging yeah. himself. Crazy. In agony from these bad auditions. Yeah. I was expecting like Disney Plus to blur that out or something. Yeah. <laughs> because he is legit. You see him wrapping the cord around his neck and yeah. lifting the cord above his head. They even do a close up on him. Is his tongue out? I can't remember. No, he's just kind of going like, like you know. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. But yeah, he, he convinces them that maybe the freak dance kid was good. He was very talented. Very talented. So he had to go potty. <laughs> Gotta love already. I think they're all vomitatious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be my best quote. And so, you know, right as they're like, yeah, there was no one. Ren shows up. Am I too late to audition? It's like, you waited this long <laughs> to pop in? Like, Yeah, they, she was like ready to pounce off screen. But yeah, of course, they're, the song that they are auditioning with is Sacramento Girl, which is absolutely iconic to the series. So Ren jumps in, she starts singing. Obviously, she gets to be the lead singer by default at this point. (laughs) I don't love how her voice matches with that song, actually. She's like, oh, I'm killing it right now. (laughs) She's so confident. (laughs) <laughs> follows me round at the mall <laughs> yeah it does not fit her. she kills it with crazy yeah yeah yeah, think, yeah but like not with 
that song. Not enough to be like, yeah. She automatically, like, she's runs in the middle of singing, and then she just stops, and she's like, hey, guys, so, like, next time, why don't we, like, pick up the tempo a little bit? Like, just, And I love the way, like, AJ just starts saying random stuff to sound like it's important. Yeah. I'll, like, turn up the vocals, and uh, we can blah, blah, blah with the vocals. Like, he says vocals again. Yeah. Like, he says it <laughs> twice. Then you could tell that they just, like, told them, like, okay, like, just say things that sound musical over each other. Say music stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next time, maybe we could pick up the tempo a little bit. Yeah, yeah. just turn it up and put the vocals and all. What is this? What is this? this? What? Pick up the tempo? What is this? You're talking like you're already in the band. Dude, she is. I mean, who is better? Lewis decides to allow Ren to be in the band because they, you know, basically they don't have a shot in hell at all without her. And so he's like, all right, you can be in the band as long as I'm in charge. I'm the boss. Oh, absolutely. Right? Right? So if I say jump, you say... How high? Right. I wasn't thinking it's a great answer, though. The bottom line is that I'm in charge. Absolutely. I wasn't thinking that's a great answer, though. That's a great answer. <laughs> I love that. Because when I was a kid, I was like, wait, isn't that like the normal? Like, I was trying to think. What was his answer in his head? Yeah. It's so, <laughs> so good. good. And like and the way Shia delivers that line is also so yeah. natural and covered. I love it. Cut to a montage of Ren becoming the boss. Yeah. Yeah. It was all lip service. Our intro music comes from this montage. Yep. So it starts with the instrumental uh, to Crazy, which is obviously supposed to sound like a Smells Like Teen Spirit yeah, knockoff. definitely. 100%. <laughs> I always think that too. The song doesn't sound like it, but the, in, but the that guitar, guitar riff, riff does. Yeah. Alone, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, so we get this montage of Ren buying matching outfits for the band, uh, dyeing Artie's hair silvery blue, which is just amazing. I love it so much. So funny. The way that he just looks at himself in the mirror with her and they just nod. (laughs) They're just like, Uh, yes. yes. (laughs) This is perfect. And then I was dying at Ren trying to teach them choreography. Oh, and Artie doing the choreography. (laughs) Like, how is he going to do that? He's just rocking back and forth. No, how, first of all, no. How are any of them going to do it? They're supposed to be playing their instruments. The drummer? The drummer was dancing. <laughs> I've been to a lot of rock concerts. I've never seen them do simultaneous choreography like a boy band. In my notes, I said, okay, though, how is this going to work? Because the choreography Ren has them doing is like waving their arms around too. Like, yeah. like going like, uh. Uh, like raising yeah. their arms above their heads. And so I'm like, does she expect them to just be like, all right, let's just put our instruments down real quick and just yeah. do <laughs> and just do a silent dance break. If you guys don't mind, we're going to do some dance moves right now. So <laughs> we're going to stop playing real quick and do some. Like the part that killed me was when the drummer is dancing. He's holding his drumsticks and yeah. dancing. Yeah. Also, how big is this stage? You have to have like a, you have to have like some sort of awareness of how big your stage is, right? <laughs> what if the stage is just like a platform? I love how into it Red is, though. Again, she's like, yeah. I'm killing this choreography right now. <laughs> yeah. She is just like, okay, follow me. That's gonna be our. That's gonna be our go-to move, guys. Just as long <laughs> as you go back to that one move, we're good. We're good. We're talking gold. It's just so funny. It's great. This episode, so even when it's like moments like that that are like laughably silly, it's still it's still really good. And, and you can tell also that they're all genuinely laughing when Artie can't get the dance. Yeah, like he's like falling over, and they're all just genuinely laughing. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> oh, it's great. But yeah, we're just gonna put our instruments down real quick to do a dance break. <laughs> dance break. <laughs> dance break. <laughs> and it's only ever three of them at a time. Like it's never all four of them. <laughs> like Artie's playing the bass and then the drummer comes out and then does it with them then drummer goes back yep and Artie comes in and he joins well, them well there you go someone's holding it down they're like rotating yeah dance break with just the bass dance break with just the drums yeah, <laughs> yeah. seeing AJ Trouth do those dances is just so funny to me yeah, I don't know why it doesn't fit yeah he's so out of his element. No, but that's why it's just so great. And he's yeah. trying, which is great. He's yeah. just like, okay, so Ren came in here out of nowhere and I got to do this now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We're going to kill it with our two songs and these dance breaks. <laughs> so Lewis is, you know, watching all of this happen, Ren taking over. And then we cut to a mini mirror talk. Yeah. We haven't seen one in a bit. More, I think it's more than a mini one. It's like a pretty. Yeah. I mean, well, because it gets cut off. That's true. Is yeah. what I meant, you know, so. I got gotcha. you. But yeah, I love it. So he says, I know I shouldn't be surprised. Ren is Ren, you know, uh, taking over is what she does. 
But not this time, my friend. No! Not without a fight! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's the password? You called us, man. What's the big secret? Right. Oh, that's close enough. <laughs> I just love, I love AJ's delivery. Dude, you called us. What's the big yeah. secret? <laughs> it, it reminds me of like, dude, it's just Afghanistan. What's the big deal? Yeah, it's not like over the top. Like, I feel like now if it was like a kid sitcom, it would be like, he'd like yell that line or like, oh, yeah, yeah. Not, not deliver it properly. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's so real. It's just like, dude, you called us. Uh, so he lets them all into his room and they basically end up having like a little survivor reference thing here because Lewis is making them all vote Ren in or Ren out. Is this going to take long? I mean, Ren gets really cranky when we're late. Aha, uh-huh, you see, that's what I'm talking about. Ren has taken the whole idea of a band and she's transformed it. Yeah. Not to mention what she's done with your hair, man. You look like Cisco. The way I see it is there can only be one guiding force in a band, and that's me. Now, I'm, I'm tough, but I'm fair, and you know that. It's, it's uh, voting time. Hmm? Ren in or Ren out. You look, you look like, like Cisco. Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> dated reference. That's a dated yeah, reference. Yeah, that's because people now are like, who the heck Cisco? Exactly. But yeah. at the time... It's a great reference, though. If you're from that era... Hysterical. That's probably going to be my favorite line. I, I definitely wrote that down yeah. for my one of my favorite quotes. I lo- I've used that line so many times that people have, like, dyed hair or something. Long story short, with this scene, we get survivor style confessionals from all of the band members talking to the camera it's just so great i love breaking the fourth wall here too yeah yeah you know, basically all of them talking to us you know is this the only time they do that the fourth wall break the fourth wall i i, I don't know it might I don't be count the mirror talks because he kind of talks at an angle yeah to himself but this one he's yeah, talking definitely. to the camera they're talking to the camera yeah, yeah. directly and i love Artie. like i kind of like my hair of course my dad freaked out when he saw it I'm not allowed to use the blender for two weeks. I guess that's kind of Ren's fault. <laughs> he has you can't use the blender. I love that line. That's like his form of punishment. I like yeah. my hair. <laughs> and then and then Andy Blaine's is just banging the drumsticks on his head. Yep, not a single line. He's like a Donnie from Wild, Wild Thornberries. Thornberries. Yeah. Yeah, he always reminds me of him. That is true. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so they got the survivor style music in the background going this whole time. They got the giant uh, wooden pen from Survivor. Yeah. They got the scroll, little pieces of paper. They got everything. And uh, then they even have a little light in the middle of the table to serve as the little tiki thing that they put out uh, at the end. So basically, the band voted, and the consensus is Lewis out. And it is so true when Twitty says, I know, man, but like, like you said, this is the music business yeah and i said honestly that is so true it is true although i don't know why they would want lewis out though i mean he doesn't do anything bad he just kind of yeah i mean i think maybe they just see it as like he's kind of pointless in this operation (laughs) lewis get out of here you're pointless pretty much but you feel bad for lewis here i think no yeah definitely it is the business though uh, but I mean, I guess with like the music business thing, I just took that as Ren is really working for us right now. Yeah, but he did get him the, this audition though. Yeah, and like, and yeah, he did get them the audition, but like, they don't have a chance without Ren, and Lewis is trying to get rid of Ren. Yeah, so he sees it as like an obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense too. And then Twitty says the band has spoken. Direct Survivor reference turns off the light, and it's over. And the Survivor music. Knockoff music swells. The didgeridoo. Which again, though, solid reference because Survivor is still on to this day. Still on, yeah. So again, so far, very yeah. just solid reference to make. I don't know who's watching it. My, I won't. I do have a friend who's obsessed with Survivor, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know anyone else who watches it. I guess because well, it was new at the time, right? It was yeah, like a I newer two, reality show. I think it. Mm-hmm. So I think it was like yeah. fresh. Yeah. So they were taking a chance referencing it. Yeah. Good thing it stuck. Definitely. It cuts to Lewis making himself a, a whole stack of gooey gobblers, which is another <laughs> iconic thing from this episode. Peanut butter and turkey sandwiches. Yep. Gooey gobbler. Which it's amazing. If you Google gooey gobblers, you can find videos of people trying gooey gobblers. I've always wanted it. I've never tried it. I've never tried it. I've always wanted to, too, but I don't yeah. have the guts to try I'll it. I'll try it. I just, I just never get around to it. Yeah, no, but there are some videos of people eating it so we don't have to. Okay. You know, that's an amazing 
thing that came from this. I don't know why Lewis needs to make that many. Um, <laughs> Maybe he made like nine sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Like, who is he making all those for? Like, come on. Well, yeah, Jason Bagwell, apparently. Turkey and peanut butter. When life deals you a hard hand, it's nothing like a big stack of gooey gobblers. Ugh! That is the most disgusting combination I have ever heard of. Yeah, is it more disgusting than me getting thrown out of my own band? The guys told me what happened. You tried to get me thrown out, and then your plan backfired on you. That may be true, but I still don't understand why you wanted to be in that stupid band anyways. Then Jason shows up again. This is the same day, mind you. Yeah, it's true. He shows up again, asking where Donnie is so they can hit the gym. Didn't you do enough of that today? Like, why are you going back to the gym? He's going to blow out his body. I'm just like, what is this friendship? Just like, yeah. hardcore. Like, I need Donnie. We need to go to the gym. Like, okay. <laughs> Same day. And he, he loves the gooey gobblers. He loves gooey gobblers. I, I love the way this is like, is this like already an in-universe known food? Because how does he just know? He's like, oh yeah, never say no to a gooey gobbler. A breathy voice. Yeah, I'm super cool. <laughs> but like, how does he already know the terminology of yeah. gooey gobbler? Oh yeah, it's maybe they sell it at Fantasia. <laughs> Ooh, I never say no to a gooey gobbler. <laughs> Run, why don't you join me? Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> If I was Ren, I'd just be like, oh, I already ate. It's cool. Like, my mom was like, okay, now why is she lying? Why is she going to make herself eat this? Like, just be like, make some excuse. But she doesn't want to. So she giggles and says, yummy, and eats the gooey gobbler. And I love the way you can clearly see her spit it back out into the napkin. I love it. I love it. You know, Lewis starts being Lewis, I guess. And he can clearly tell that um, Ren likes Jason. Yeah. And uh, Ren's like, okay, give me a second. Pulls him aside. They go into the fridge, which I remember seeing this on a lot of commercials, like mm-hmm. just their heads in the fridge talking. And, uh, you know, he's just like, so you like that Jason guy, huh? Well, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to start my own band. And then I remember on commercials, my band's going to blow your band out of the water. I remember that being on some sort of promo. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Like maybe a promo specifically for yeah. this episode or something. Maybe. I love the way it just does a... So it's like, my band's going to blow your band out of the water. Cut to Tawny at lunch the next day. I yeah. love it. Yeah. My band's going to blow your band out of the water. Lewis, you don't have a band. These little details are killing me. And then Tom being amazing. Yep. There's a new software out that makes musicians totally obsolete. What do you mean? Like you don't have to know how to play instruments to make music? Lewis. In a few hours, I could create a full orchestra right on my hard drive. Oh, get out of here. He's down, too. Like, Lewis is like, yes. Yeah. This is my solution. Like, it was already kind of a joke then, too, because, like, we already had, like, all the pop people coming out with their... Yeah, vocoders and stuff. Yeah, samples and beats and everything. Yeah. But now it's, like, at another level. Like, literally, all you need is a computer now to be a, be an artist. Yeah, like. Totally. And so it's just funny, like a line like that is, it was already kind of funny then because the world was all like, you know, heading that way, but it's just funny now and, you know, yeah. knowing what we know, it's just such a good line. And then, yeah, Lewis is one qualification. Can you dance to it? I can raise the roof. <laughs> and then that sample that I love. <laughs> oh, that's enough time. And then I just love Lewis. He goes, oh, that's enough time. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, like, humors him for all of two seconds, and that's yeah. enough, Tom. <laughs> and Tom just freezes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and Tawny, um, her face. Oh, okay. Did you read what her shirt says? Isn't it like, I... I make boys cry. Yeah, I make boys cry. Yep, so I love that. Yeah. Uh, accurate. So then it cuts to another daydream Ren is having of being on the beach with Jason, feeding each other strawberries, and it's interrupted by Artie <laughs> just talking yeah. to her, Earth to Ren. It's so funny. There are four dream sequences in this episode, but It's because it's the same dream, though. I love well, yeah, it. Except the first one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Except for Lewis. But yeah, with these Ren ones, it's just all okay. different variations. Mm-hmm. Ren snaps out of it. They're in band rehearsal. And she's like, okay, we got a lot of work to do. We got to keep going. And I love the way she counts off, not the way you count off, but... Yeah. She's like, in three, two, one, I'm like, a uh, blast off? Yeah, we're launching a rocket or something. <laughs> I didn't. I guess I didn't even notice that she counted like that. Oh, yeah, that's literally Jimmy Neutron right there. Uh, listen, we have this big audition tomorrow, and we still have a lot of work to do. So, in three, two, one. Got a blast! I didn't even notice oh, that. Yeah, God. that's funny. 
yeah, they couldn't be bothered to tell them, like, yeah, no, you count. Yeah. One to four. One, yeah. <laughs> don't count backwards, please. Stop. And don't start at three for a song that's in four, four. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah. Like none of this makes sense. Yeah. Are we counting zero? Are we doing zero, one, two, three? Or? <laughs> it's great. They try to start practicing, but they're interrupted by music blaring from upstairs, which is also the iconic song. The sandals of my soul go flip, flop, flip, flop. The bunny in my brain goes hip hop, hip hop. The rain in my soul goes drip, drop, drip, drop. The horsey in my heart goes clip, clop, clip, clop. Flip, flop, hip hop, drip, drop, clip, clop, love. <laughs> what is this? This is the Louis Stevens experience. The more I think about these lyrics, I just start laughing. It's so tawny, first of all. It's so tawny. Second of all, the synth is actually really... I like the synth that, that Tom's playing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like a cool 80s like techno thing. I, I'm digging it. And I, Twitty's into it too, apparently. I know, I know. Twitty's yeah. awesome. Tawny sings this song. It is so hilarious. And they're totally decked out too, like in their- uh, A la Devo. Like Devo, yeah. Jumpsuits. Yeah. Yeah, and so Ren and, and the Alan Twitty project, as they currently are still, uh, come up and she's like, what is this? And I gotta love the music stops. And then this is the Louis Stevens experience. experience. And then the only thing Louis Stevens is going to experience <laughs> is pain. I love that line. <laughs> I love it too. And then Twitty's like, no, actually, I kind of like their sound. I feel like, yeah. you know, we should take theirs, the Louis Stevens experience, you know, mix it with ours, the Al Twitty project. We can have this super band thing going on, like Crosby, Crosby Stills, Stills and, and that, that other old guy. guy. <laughs> it's a good idea. We don't really, it, it becomes a competition between yeah. Ren and Lewis right now for a very short amount of time. Um, it cuts from them just both really rehearsing super loud, trying to rehearse over each other. The CGI of the house expanding yeah. and contracting and bouncing. So much CGI. <laughs> it's so bad. No, oh, it's bad. Yeah. And so then it cuts basically straight to the end um, with the audition at the Stevens basement, which is funny because as a kid, I thought they were at Jason's basement. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you don't, yeah. Yeah, but he came to them. And I've said this before. I used to think, this is the first time I watched it, oh, even Stevens, I thought Twitty was like Jason's brother or something because mm. they kind of have like that similar hair and same look kind of. They kind of right. look similar. I mean, it doesn't make sense because like it's casting. Like they yeah. don't have to look like each other. But um, yeah, when I first watched it, I thought they were related. This entire scene... Jason Bagwell speaks in the third person. He's such a... <laughs> you know what? And Tawny's like the only person who can see through all his BS. She says the same thing that she says in Deep Chocolate. She says, who's yeah, this guy who's think guy, he is? Who do you think he is? Yeah. So, Jason Bagwell, he says, you will be judged according to the Jason Bagwell's like handbook or whatever. It says, band evaluation form for Jason Bagwell's party. He goes down this list. He says, Any band that wants to play at a Jason Bagwell party must be evaluated on the Jason Bagwell band evaluation form. I will be judging you on musical ability, delivery, rhythm, emotion, timing, style. Smile, hair, skin tone, and cuticles. Cuticles. And as a kid, I was like, you know, skin tone, I just thought of like, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. But now I'm just like, were they just suddenly saying that Jason was racist? Yeah, like, you have to be white. <laughs> but it's like, if you already know their skin tone, why do you have to... I know, like, what? Like, if you Google skin tone... The definition is human skin color. Maybe he means complexion. Maybe. I want to know what their grade was for skin tone. This guy's just a slime ball. He's a, he's a mess. <laughs> he's like the worst character in Even Stevens. Oh my God. He's funny though. I think just because yeah. how ridiculous he is. Yeah, he's so ridiculous. And he's, I mean, it's the cheesy acting too makes it better. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, all right, so let's get into it. Alan Twitty Project sounds great. They killed it.
like if I heard them, I'd be like, dude, no one's going to be better. No one's going to be these guys. I mean, and for like middle school kids? Yeah, I'm saying for like a high school party, like you don't have to pay them anything. But then again, is that their only song? But he judges them based off that song and yeah. apparently doesn't like it. So Oh, I know. I, I love the ending of the song. It's just so funny. I just can't help but laugh. The hazy, hey, hey, hey. That's such a th- 2000s riff right there. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. it's so good. Um, and Jason says nothing. Yeah, he says, okay. He's like so into his little world there of yeah. evaluation form evaluating i love the way he's acting as if there's like twenty thousand people on the roster okay uh next up the lewis stevens experience it's like yeah try the only other band in the basement <laughs> is up next <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah how i want to know who won their competition i hope it was somebody terrible so lewis says you know i just want to say what an honor it'd be to play to jason bagwell party sir he says hit it boys and uh tom starts you know they they kick it into whatever and it's funny because tawny comes in off beat yeah she's off The sandals of my soul go hip flop, flip flop. The bunny in my brain goes hip hop, hip hop. It bothers me every single time. Yeah, me too. Tawny starts off beat, so they already flunked timing. I love how it ends here, and Lewis is trying to like continue. He's like, no, no, I'm I'm singing hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop bunny yeah. in the brain. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's one of my favorite moments. In this episode. Like, everything's melting down. Like, at that point, nobody cares if the music keeps going, because it's... Oh, yeah. Like, it's he's going down in flames, literally. Maybe they won't notice if I sing the rest of the song. I know. I just love it. Bunny in the brain. Yeah. What is that? What is happening? Um, and then, you know, he's like, I can't lose to them. He falls over, <laughs> falls into a drum, and then the best line, Artie Ryan. Give me this. I can't lose to them, okay? I'm no... What a finish. <laughs> Not phased by what just happened. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah, and so it was a fiasco. And uh, and then Jason, just such a jerk, he's like, all right, let's get this over with. He's the worst. And speaking in third person. Okay. Uh, let's get this over with. Let's see the Alan Twitty project. <clears throat> Not up to Jason Bagwell standards. Like, yeah. <laughs> Has he compiled all of those scores already? <laughs> like, to, you know what I mean? Like, he does it. Yeah. He's so, I want to know what, like, besides the singing, he says the singing, but the singing was good. Yeah. And what was the other thing he said? He said the playing lacked precision. But yeah. It's, well, it's pre-recorded, bro, so I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. What more do you want? These were this was recorded by studio musicians. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But uh, yeah, the playing lacked precision, and the singing. What's wrong with my singing? And I love the way you know he he goes. Well, the vocal quality is fair. I'm like, who? Did, like, who is this guy? So it is. So it wasn't the. It wasn't the vocal quality. Then it was the. It was just Ren personally because he says. The vocal quality is fair, but Ren, you're, you're trying so hard to impress me, it's almost pathetic. My sister doesn't have to impress anybody, and she may be a bossy, overachieving bathroom hog, but my sister is a great singer. It's awful. Yeah. I, I wrote in my notes how it's like a really nice brother-sister she, thing here, though. She was trying hard, too hard to impress him, though. Yeah, well, yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the song was written about him as well. Exactly. Yeah, and then, you know, he's yelling at Ren, and then Tawny... Who wants to play at your lame party anyways? Well, obviously not the Lewis Stevens experience. You got straight zeros. And Lewis, I mean, what kind of a doofus are you? That's that's not a band, that's a fire hazard. Back up! The only person that's allowed to call my brother a doofus is me! Yeah, that's, that's right, bag boy. And if I'm a doofus, I want to hear it from her. You guys got straight zeros. Not even for complexion? <laughs> I know, not even for skin tone. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, yeah. And it was just so mean to like call him a doofus like that and then Ren sticking up for him and it was just, it was a nice ending there the way they both realize what a jerk Jason is and so they come together. Yeah, Ren's just like going off and then she goes, You may look good on the beach, but in reality you're just a pompous, egotistical jerk. I never went to the beach with you. And you never will. I'm out of here. She's like, 
don't care. You never will. It's a really good line. Jason Bagwell, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, and so like Tweety says, he's packing it up. And then Artie says, if all this is over, I'm going back to my first love. Figure skating. Just so good. <laughs> he's really good. And then Lewis, hey, if you guys are still into the super band thing, I think I can get us a gig. And then we just cut to seeing them on stage. We don't know where they're playing. Um, and Lewis's intro just kills me. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, let me have your attention. Can you stay off the towers back there, please? Off the towers. Um, I'd like to introduce the Twitty Stevens Connection. Can you stay off the towers? Thank you. Yeah. Which is apparently a nod to Woodstock. Woodstock, yeah. Wavy, uh, yeah. Uh, wavy Gravy or Chipmunk? One of them says that. Yeah, Chipmunk, I think. Um, yeah, but even without that knowledge, I just love it. Yeah, and it was already a quote-unquote, like, dated reference but it was Woodstock so yeah Woodstock Iconic. is Woodstock yeah yeah later you know they zoom out and we see that they're playing at like a little kitty birthday party with a clown and it's just so great the same clown from Deep Chocolate I'm pretty sure oh yeah probably maybe he must have known Savage Steve Holland somewhere I know <laughs> yeah but yeah it's just so like with that knowledge I just picture a bunch of kids just like climbing like some kid toy towers yeah. and Lewis is just like off the towers please off the towers <laughs> Because he's just trying to get the kids' attention because the kids yeah. don't care. Yeah, they're like, I don't care about... They're like six-year-old kids. <laughs> we want these balloon animals. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they all come together. They sing crazy. And you f- you hear some of the do 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 in the background, the beats, the program beats, <laughs> which you don't later hear in the Twitty Stevens Connection yeah, material. no, you don't. And Tawny doesn't do anything. No, she stands there and waves her hands like her, this. Her role is unclear in the band right now. Mm-hmm. But Lewis introduces them, which is very fun. And a legendary fictional band is born. Yep. And that's basically the episode, except for Ren having a nightmare slash daydream slash, no, actual nice dream of yeah. Jason getting attacked by lobsters <laughs> in her yeah. continuous dream sequence. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. All right, so MVP of this episode... What do we got? Besides Lewis, I put Artie, just because he's perfect. I mean... Yeah, Artie's always an MVP. We rule. Like, just everything he says is so funny. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're going to rule. It's so good. Even Stevens is really good. And I mean, it's the writers and everything, but they're really good at painting these antagonists and starting... You start off kind of... They fit so well into these characters' worlds, and they these characters like admire them so much. Like Jason Bagwell or Blake Thompson, mm-hmm. June Marie, or even Mr. Randall, like you get sucked into their charisma or the characters get sucked into it. And then later in the episode, mm-hmm. the, they flip and you're like, no, these guys are not good people. There's a twist or they find out. Like, yeah. Even Stevens is really well, I think, mm-hmm. to where sometimes when there are characters that you really like, you wonder, like, are they going to turn out to be bad? Like Yvette, maybe someone like that. Uh, They have a really good antagonist, I think. Really, like, you despise these people. Yeah. That's the goal. What do you you have for MVP, you said? Um, Honestly, I'd probably say Artie, too. Or Shia's dad. (laughs) (laughs) That is a good MVP, yeah. Or the freak dance kid. Yep. But yeah, I feel like Shy. I feel like Shy's dad now is going to be a fun yeah, Easter egg to look for, like everywhere. <laughs> if I'm trying possible. to think of another place he could be. I know, me too. Tex Nagitas or something. Tex Nagitas, yeah, that's funny. I don't know. Just sitting there. Um, I I just love this episode. It feels so big, just importance wise, like mm. I was saying. But it also feels like it's a transitional moment for the show. Mm-hmm. Before this episode, they lean on. Lewis a lot for humor Mm -hmm. but this one they really branched out to these other characters for comedy not just Artie and Tom right uh, even all the people auditioning they really started to kind of find out that they can make everyone funny and not just Lewis and I think the show takes a turn for the better at this exact moment and also I mean this episode kicks off the band arc yeah and that too that we see go throughout all three seasons yeah it's seminal and yeah it kind of glues their friendship together in a way so you got any trivia yeah I got a couple so it's time now for some trivia is it true did you know for your information is it true that what does that mean Jason is played by Chase Penny who ended up being He's a stunt man. Mm-hmm. He did stunts for Eagle Eye and oh. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, I think. 
That is funny. Yeah. Two shy of films. Yeah, two shy of films. The country singer is played by Sarah Dalton. Mm -hmm. She was a casting director on a few episodes. Um, so that's interesting. And then this is kind of a, a sadder uh, trivia. The little boy was played, the freak dance kid was played by Steve Asuna, I think you pronounce oh, it. Oh no, oh no, where is this going? He was actually murdered by his dad in 2010. What? Yeah, he was 20 years old. He and his mom, it was a murder-suicide. Um, they both were slain um, by, their da- by his dad. Isn't that sad? I did not need to hear that. Oh my god. It's crazy, yeah. I know. I, I just kind of stumbled a, upon that. That is um, insane. Yeah. Oh my god. That made me really yeah. sad. He only had a few credits. There's a YouTube video of him singing a song, like in it was like a tribute to him. I think like his sister or someone posted it. I loved that kid. Yeah, he was really good. He's so and, funny. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Oh my god, that is awful. <laughs> anyway, but on that note, any anything else? That's uh, that's all I got. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's kind of depressing. Yeah. So, okay, for me, obviously, Shia's dad was like the most amazing thing I found. That's amazing. Yeah. I was so excited about it. But then, of course, the rundown of pop culture quite a bit in this episode. Mm-hmm. So we have allusions to Devo, Nirvana, Cisco, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Survivor, J Lo and Britney Spears, Woodstock with the Off the Towers. My mom thought it was a platoon reference at the end when Jason's in the water going, ah! Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even catch that. Immediately. That's like, he one. got down on his knees and mom said, platoon! I was like, okay, mom. Yeah. That's <laughs> All cool. All right. Um, Alan Twitty Project was the Alan Parsons Project. Yes, yes. That was another thing. Yep. Oh, and then, of course, the Lewis Stevens experience is supposed to be the Jimi Hendrix experience. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix experience. (laughs) Yep. That's pretty much all of the pop culture and trivia. Yeah. So, of course, everyone's favorite segment. And boy, was there a lot here. Really? (laughs) Oh, God. I don't even know how I'm going to go through all these. I took 20,000 screenshots. (laughs) I don't even know. Literally 20,000? Oh, it it might as well be. (laughs) I guess let's just get into it. It's time for tweets. This first tweet I found a long time ago and took a screenshot of it. Like, I'm talking like last year or something. And I just thought it was funny. And then it's relevant to this episode. So I tried to find it again. Couldn't find the tweet, but I found my screenshot. So I still have it. So I had to read this tweet. It's from at momfriendtm. It's a screenshot of the lyrics of Tawny's poetry lyrics. And the caption for the picture says, These lyrics set to the pre-programmed electro beat on a $20 keyboard. (laughs) 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 And I was just imagining like... Someone getting a twenty dollar keyboard, pressing that pre programmed electro beat yeah. that's you know, just like doom tick a pound do 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 or something yeah. and just like the sandals of my soul go <laughs> flop. Man. Oh, I loved that. It's so funny. Then another one about that song. Two people have pointed out that Eminem's rap god sounds like Bunny in my brain goes hip hop, hip hop. Really? I don't know. That. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I know I know the song, but I can't think of what they're thinking of. I don't even know the song. Yeah, because someone said, does anybody else think that Eminem's rap god sounds like that stupid song Tawny sings from Even Stevens? The bunny in my brain goes hip hop, hip hop. <laughs> stupid song. That was Zachary Schwartz. This guy at Murphy two times. I'm going to censor it. So he says, people be on SoundCloud rapping like that girl from Even Stevens. The sandals of my soul go <laughs> flip flop, flip flop, LMAO. <laughs> uh, and then a lot of tweets that just say, does anyone else sporadically get Sacramento Girl from Even Stevens stuck in their head? Um, I don't think any song will ever be as fire as Sacramento Girl. Another person at Nostalgic MC. I have this nervous tick where I sing Sacramento Girl from Even Stevens whenever I'm nervous. Is that cute or is that weird? (laughs) That is weird and cute. Now, this tweet was written from Massachusetts, actually. And this person got a bunch of stuff messed up. This gave me a headache. Oh, these are great. These tweets are just amalgamations of all Even Stevens stuff (laughs) together. So this one is from Eliza. 
And she says, I can't hear the word Sacramento without singing Sacramento Girl by Ren Stevens from that Even Stevens musical influenza episode. Oh my gosh. It's been 16 years of this. Hashtag beans. <laughs> not the hashtag beans. Beans is not in the musical episode. Beans is yeah, not in this episode. That's amazing. But hashtag beans. I love hashtag beans. <laughs> That is really good. So now this person from number one, Pete Wentz's pelvic tattoo stan. Oh. Uh, which, Yikes. okay, Pete Wentz, I'm also a Fall Out Boy uh, fan, but uh, so they say, the three Even Stevens episodes burned into my memory are the Ren Has a Fever Dream musical, Clones With No Eyes Drink Milk Halloween special, okay. and the Sacramento Girl song. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty on par with everyone else I've heard. <laughs> Another person, Lindsay, says, It's time to give Sacramento Girl and Bunny in My Brain from Even Stevens the Grammy Awards they deserve. Definitely Bunny in My Brain. <laughs> <laughs> At Posty Ghosty says, I don't know why the hell the lyrics, quote, My Sacramento Girl, she screams, yeah, was stuck in my head all day yesterday. I finally Googled the words and it's an old song from Even Stevens. Like, what even? I want to know why the Sacramento Girl just keeps screaming, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the best part. It's just so great. She screams, yeah. <laughs> no oh context to that at all. Um, another person with the rap god thing, Greg, says, Rap god by Eminem reminds me of the episode of Even Stevens where they had the really weird techno band and I just start cheesing when I hear it. <laughs> Man, I got to hear this song now. I don't know if I might know it. I just don't listen to a lot of rap music anymore. At Burial Shroud says, any episode of Even Stevens where they were playing in a band made me want to be in a band. So I, I love this one. At Beastly Wretch just says, remember that episode of Even Stevens where Lewis and his weirdo outcast friends start an experimental electronica band? <laughs> experimental, yeah. It was, it was avant-garde. Experimental electronica band. Then there was some guy who back in 2017 just wrote the same tweet like five times and just added a bunch of different pictures to it. So he said, Margot Harshman as Tawny Dean, the goth scientist girl from Even Stevens season one, episode Battle of the Bands, Louis Stevens Experience, part one. And then he did part two mm -hmm. and part three. And it's just all different pictures of her dressed doing the buddy in my brain thing. Wow, someone's got an obsession. Yes, very creepy. Um, and I love the way he called her the goth scientist girl. <laughs> and here's another tweet that someone got wrong at good content dot dot dot. I don't know, it got cut off. They say, remember that episode of Even Stevens where Tom Grabalski tried to enter a Battle of the Bands contest? Yes, he did. He was totally, <laughs> if it was just Tom singing by himself. A good tweet to end on is from at Stadium Soul. Mm -hmm. from 20 to from 2015 the even stevens battle of the bands episode is better than the godfather 2 yep that says it all that is true that's where we end it yeah so we so we did the mvp we did the we did trivia pop culture we did tweets so now best quote which was very difficult it was a, it was a hard one um but i went with the well, who went first last time I, I can't remember because i'm editing episodes editing, in between yeah. these so i can't remember um, just go just go Ethan. just go so I went with the one that I said the most in my life. Okay. Every time I hear it, I just laugh. It's such a good quote. It's you can answer the the clip. It's the mm -hmm. look what she did to your hair. You look like Cisco. Yeah. So good. It's, it is so good. And I've used. I've even took liberties with it and like inserted a different reference, different right. times. If it, you know, people half the people don't get it, but the people who know who Cisco is think it's hilarious. I know his phrasing is great. Not to mention what she's done with your hair, man. You look like Cisco. <laughs> he takes it yeah. up that next that next level. It's so great. Yeah. And then I love the way it cuts like right into the next thing. You look like Cisco. The way I see it. Yeah. Is that? Blah, blah, blah. I'm just like what? <laughs> yeah, that was a total cut. Yeah. So I have a whole. You can see my thing of a few yeah. a few different yeah. quotes. So my first one is Artie Ryan. I think they're all vomitatious. Good one. Um, I've used that word few times mm -hmm. my next one on the list is you look like cisco yep. the next one is just off the towers please off the towers yeah. just the next one which was close to being my top one is you know the why would a junior high uh, you know a high school guy want junior high kids and then because we rock 
and will work for nothing. Yeah. Just the and will work for nothing. Just, I love it. Renz, you may look good on the beach. No, that's a really good one. And then her telling Jason that he has a nice steady pulse. <laughs> yeah. I just love it. Man, this episode's so good. So I think, like, we keep not having enough time to talk about this, but obviously Disney Plus is a thing now. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot to talk about about that. So I think we might have some Wombat news to cover. The Wombat News. I will say it's very, very, very interesting to see the shift in even Steven's popularity. Yeah. Like already, like our socials have been climbing uh, our podcast. Like if anyone has discovered us since Disney Plus, which I know a lot of you have, Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Thank you for, like, the shout-outs on Twitter, um, the emails, everything. Like, it's just so awesome. The voicemail, you know, that we got for today's uh, today's episode. It's just super cool. Like, it actually finally feels like this is starting to become a community, Mm -hmm. which was always the goal, but it was, like, just us and a handful of other people uh, who cared. But now it's actually feeling like it's becoming, like, a widespread thing you know i had mentioned before that i was kind of a hipster about the thing at first but now it's just been so amazing to see so many people rediscovering it and having the same exact experience Mm -hmm. i did when i rediscovered it because i knew people would it was just a matter of it being accessible i guess and props to disney for putting because there's a lot of shows that aren't on disney plus Mm -hmm. um so i mean thanks to them for recognizing that even Stevens was important to a lot of people and recognizing how good it is and putting it back up for people to be able to watch it. Mm-hmm. Cause there are shows that aren't on there yet. I mean, obviously Jed Jackson wasn't as big as even Stevens yeah. and nor was like the Jersey. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy time we're, we're dealing with right now. Yeah. It's just crazy. Um, like for example, like this is just to give you guys the stats, Before Mm -hmm. Disney Plus, our podcast, we were typically hitting 100 downloads an episode, which was super cool because it was such a niche and it was like our niche, however you want to say that word. And so I was like, if we're averaging 100 downloads an episode, that's amazing. That's 100 people downloading this and listening to Mm -hmm. us talk for at least an hour about Even Stevens. (laughs) Like, that's amazing. So normally, like if we'd put out an episode, that would be the episode for the month and we get maybe 100 downloads for that month. Yeah. Well, since Disney Plus launched last month, so for the month of November, so from November 12th to the end of November, our podcast got 720 downloads. Just one, oh, like overall? Overall. Holy cow. Where we were getting one to 200 a month. Yes. Wow. That was just the last half of the month too. And usually like, the 100 episodes would be, I mean, the 100 downloads would be like just on that new episode. Yeah. As well. Wow, like, you know what I mean? Crazy. Yeah. I, I saw you posted on the Instagram. We were climbing up the TV show review. Yeah. Are we still at that same spot or are we, did we um, drop it's, a little? It's, it's definitely fluctuating. What's the, what was our peak? Oh, uh, I think in the 50s. Really? Which is crazy. So wow. what we're talking about, I posted on our Instagram yeah. story that I got an I got a notification. I guess this website Chartable has a little deal with Apple, I guess, that they let you know these notifications. And they said, yeah, we want to let you know that you're charting on the Apple Podcast United States TV and Film Review chart. And so I was like, okay. So I, I took a look at it. And when I first was notified, we were at like number 229 yeah, or something. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, that's cool. I'll keep checking that. So then I checked it again and we were 71. And then according to the stat thing, like our peak, we were number 57 on November 25th. Wow. Does it say we are right now? Uh, I don't. As of yesterday, we were 232. (laughs) So it's fluctuating, but. Yeah, even I saw my blog like the first week I was getting like massive amounts of hits and it's definitely Mm -hmm. it's tapering off now but um yeah i just went to even stevens rank.com right now and there are currently four readers on the blog right now wow that's cool before disney plus the website had it had just hit thirty six thousand views 
and now it's thirty nine thousand three hundred and seven. So, so just in a month, basically. It, in a month, it jumped Not like even. how much is that? Six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, like the three, three four thousand hits. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. definitely crazy. It's no coincidence. This is definitely due to Disney Plus. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. Uh, but it's awesome, right? Because is this not what we wanted? Yeah. And our Reddit, our subreddit is like really climbing. We're pushing 100 people now. Mm-hmm. And other people have been contributing. It's been really cool. Like it's not just my username in there writing every single post. Yeah. The last few posts are all from different people, which is super fun. That's really cool. I wish that Disney Plus would put up like promos or something, like old the old promos yeah. just in like a, like a group of them just put them up there and as like disney channel promos for even steven yeah for each show though they do have a little extras yeah section yeah. but there's nothing for even stevens yeah. but it'd be so good if for extras they put behind the scenes stuff yeah. promos that'd like be that'd really be really cool. fun or like a maybe a commentary or something yeah just something a little extra yeah. would be fun I almost wish that they would have quote unquote ad breaks, but the ad break would be an yeah, old. Yeah, that would be sick. Like maybe like some old bumpers or like, I'm blah, blah, and you're watching Disney Channel. Or people have said to have some of the stars come back and do it for Disney oh, Plus. That'd be cool. Especially with like the new Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, that'd to be, be cool. like, I'm Hilary Duff and you're watching Disney Plus. <laughs> that was cool when they had Lauren Frost do it on, or Christy had it. Yeah, because she never got to do on it. On her show. Yeah, that was cool. I still wonder why we never got one of Shia. Yeah, weird, right? Because he was the freaking star of the show. Because AJ did one, I think. Yep. It's like if AJ did one. Steven Anthony Lawrence did one. <laughs> yep. It's did like, Christy? why not the heck should I? Christy did Christy one, yeah. Christy did one, right? Wow, that's true. Maybe he said, I'm not doing that crap. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm on holes now. <laughs> I'm not holding a little CG wand and doing this, yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if we did get that, though? That would be iconic. I'm Shia LaBeouf from Even Stevens, and you're watching oh, Disney oh, yeah. Channel. That'd be sick. I, w- I would want him to do it now. I know. <laughs> I'm Shia LaBeouf from Even Stevens. Better late than never. <laughs> so I think that about wraps it up. Yeah, once again, we're two hours and 13 minutes into this conversation. Who knows how long it will be once I edit it. But once again, for some reason, we cannot go less than two hours unless it's an episode that we don't really care for you're welcome (laughs) ladies and gentlemen for all this content about a 22 minute episode honestly though yeah so that's about everything of course all the usual stuff follow us on all the socials twitter instagram facebook tumblr which is just the website even stevensrank.com redbubble i went on a shopping spree on our own redbubble shop the other day i don't know when this episode's going to be up hopefully it'll be up before christmas go on there do a little shopping spree. Mm-hmm. Usually Redbubble has insane holiday sales. I'm talking like 60, 70% off, like really? so many things. Oh, wow. Yeah. So definitely be checking that out because there's so many fun designs on there. I bought at least like six things for myself. Yeah. Yeah. One of the designs that I created that aren't public yet, I ordered one to make sure it looks good first, uh, are shirts to sort of promote and help out the podcast. So... If you want, you can get a shirt that has our little the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast logo over the left side of your chest, like a little, uh, you know, like a little business logo sort of thing going on. If you want to support, that'll be cool. I'm definitely, you know, I ordered one for myself, of course. Uh, But yeah, it's just fun. You can get them in any color and Mm -hmm. Redbubble's pretty cool like that yeah so that's about everything all the socials uh as you heard today you now know what you could sound like if you call in and leave us a voicemail wasn't it awesome that could be you so call us at 857-246-9731 of course it will be in the description as well but obviously we would love to hear from you it's so great to actually hear your voices it's fun so watch even stevens on disney plus Watch Even Stevens on Disney Plus. And uh, we will see you guys in the next episode. See ya.